Hi everyone, in today's video I'll be going over this quick script that allows you to turn a mesh into a wireframe, then we turn it into a NURB, but then at the end we actually turn it into um, this type of dome, we export it. Um, I'll show you how to add the materials, export it. I did have a little bit of an issue when I baked the, um, the B-Rep, it didn't work out, so I had another method of doing it, so check it out at the end. Let me know if you have any questions. I ha I'll have this in the description. Um, you will need to have Weaverbird and some plugins. So I'll have the, the, the links for those in the description. They're not that hard and to download and install and they're free. So um, yeah, go ahead, uh, stay tuned and let's jump right into this quick one. Okay, so in today's video, I wanted to show you how to turn a mesh into a B-Rep. So uh, when you're here inside of Grasshopper, there's gonna be a tab here that says Mesh. And um, there's gonna be an instance in which, uh, let's say you download the polyhedron. A lot of these components in here are gonna actually bring in a mesh. So if I went to a circle here and I gave it a radius, let's say 120, to make it big. Um, notice that we also get no definition on here. So what I do is I bring in the mesh edges that way I can see the subdivision. And then here we can kind of play around with the UV count. So what's cool about having a mesh brought in is that you already can subdivide it. Uh, when you bring in a sphere, you're only allowed to, well, when you bring in a sphere of a B-Rep or a NURB, it's, you're, it's not gonna allow you to do the UMV count. So that's what's cool here that we can go to, let's say 13. So I'll plug this in here, plug this in here. Now we have the ability to kind of change this up and down. Um, so that's cool. Uh, those are some of the cool parameters that we have here under the just the typical mesh primitives. And now that we have um, basically the mesh that we can see here, well, what I'll actually do is I'll delete this one and go to mesh faces. So let's go to face. Um, so it's going to be phase boundaries and what phase boundaries is going to do is take a mesh and get the boundaries of each one of these squares. Um, so once we do that, then we can take this, these boundary surfaces and turn them into, um, or yeah, those boundaries and turn them into boundary surfaces. This will turn the mesh into a B rep, which we can now take this and let's see join it together so we can join it together as and now what we have here resulting is one close b-rep that's going to now be not a mesh but it'll be a nerb uh, so like i said one of the cool things that we have here about the mesh is that um, it's already subdivided so Let's say you already turned it into a B-Rep and you wanted it a solid, that's good. But one of the cool things that you can do with this mesh when you bring it back is go to uh, Weaverbird, which is going to be a plugin that you can download in Food for Rhino. And here we can start going to Picture Frame on the Weaverbird. And now if we go ahead and disable the preview there, we have basically a wireframe of that sphere. So this kind of saves us some time if we were to, if we wanted to subdivide a sphere instead of doing isotrim and all those things, this is one way that you can do it fairly quickly. And now to give it some thickness, we'll go to Weaver Bird's Mesh Thicken and I'll plug that right into here. So notice now that we have all of this information, but it's actually still a mesh. So when we look here, it says mesh with how many subdivisions in the V and in the F. So here uh, or how many vertices and how many faces we have there. So what we're going to do is take this and turn it into a B-Rep or a NURB. So I'll plug this into here and it will take a little bit of time for it to process all of this information. But once it does, it will have a perfectly closed B-Rep that represents the entire design here. Also, it might be a good idea if you don't have as many subdivisions as I have right now because the more subdivisions, the longer it's going to take to process all of the information. Okay, so now that we have that done, I'll preview this one and we'll see that 
all of those will show up. And then I'll actually take all of this stuff and disable preview. And now we'll be able to see how clean this wireframe is. And all the intersections are just perfectly connected here. So uh, that's what's cool about being able to turn that mesh into a B rep is that now we can bake it. And in Rhino, we can edit it, uh, play around with it, just uh, do modifications, and then be able to export it to either sell or to put in your portfolio. So in here, we'll actually change the UMB count to like 15 to do a little bit less. Um, so it's not so heavy. And now that we have this, we can basically uh, bake it. So it didn't take us too many steps here. And this is all fully parametric. So I'll make sure to have this in the description for you to play around with. Uh, but also notice that it doesn't have to just be the sphere mesh. It could be a box mesh. There's just many ways in which um, we can use this type of um, you know, subdivision. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and go to our layers. So I'll go to layer one and call this dome and change the color to black. And so I'll, with that layer selected, I'll middle click and then bake. And basically take this information from Grasshopper and now bring it into Rhino. So this will be perfect for me to detail and create a dome. Uh, and I typically, what I do is with my parametric designs, I will take this dome and detail it, put a person, do a bunch of views and post it on my CG Trader website. Um, so what that does is the designs that I create here just for having fun and um, as a exercise, I'm also able to make a little bit of money on and um, also use it as my portfolio. So that's kind of what I do. So what I'll do here is I created a box down here and I want it to be right at the bottom of this frame. And now I'm going to select this one and do a Boolean difference. So for Boolean difference, the quick and small command is BD. And then I'll select this one and then hit enter. So the one that you want to keep is going to be the one that you select first. Now that we have that, it's perfect because we have this really clean dome. And let's take a look at it in rendered view. And also, uh, the last thing that makes it look really good here in rendered view is going to be to uh, go to the sun. And then sun options, we're going to turn it on. So let's go here to there we go. Perfect. So this shows you what the uh, shadow would look like here if the sun was directly above. Uh, now, there are, it is giving me some issues here. So that is very strange that it would do that. So let's go here to shaded. And yeah, for some reason, some of those faces did not translate into the model. So I wonder if that's an issue from the Boolean difference or if it's an issue from the start when I baked it. So. So there was an issue with it before. Um, so the other way to do that would be just to take this mesh, bake it, and then here in Rhino, go ahead and type in mesh to NURB. So in some cases, it will have issues. So this would be the second approach um, if you do have that issue. Let's see here. So now we have our mesh turned into a NURB and now it's actually perfectly closed. So um, sometimes uh, Grasshopper does give us some issues, but there's always ways to fix that. Um, and I'll make sure to, if I figure out the issue that we had there, I'll make sure to let you know so I can post it here. Um, so now I brought this plane up to the construction plane so I can take a box and just quickly pull this down like this. So I just create a rectangle, then pull it down. And now I can do Boolean difference between that one, this one, and finally <laughs> have a, let's see here, have the view that we want. So perfect. 
cool so that's how you would do that and then at the end what i do is once i have that geometry there i'll type in purge to get rid of all of the information that i have um, or anything that i'm not using and so the dome layer is going to be the only one on and then i'll go to material and then here i go to plastic and we can play around with whatever material you're trying to play kind of do and then here we do color reflectivity hit okay and now we have this uh, dome that typically i sell in my cg trader so i can show you maybe a little bit of that so you can see that um, you can play around doing design work getting better at using the tools and at the same time be able to post some some of your models so you can sell and make a little bit of money because um, why not if you've already spent the time designing it why not just spend a little bit of time um, organize the information and just post it and people will buy them so um, i've already sold a lot on this one i have another account where i have other models so it's just something to do if you have some free time and it also helps because it'll make you a better designer so from here um, I typically do a 360 view animation and then just export it in all the different uh, formats so you can sell it. Um, and yeah, if you do have any questions or uh, would like to see a video uh, of anything specific, let me know. And I appreciate you guys coming by and watching this video and I hope to see you next time.